Welcome back. And this morning we're going to talk about bases for tanks. Uh, bases for tanks here in North America isn't um, always one of the things that guys think of. Uh, a recent visit to Stressa at World Expo in 2014, which I think there was roughly 3,000 models at, I would suggest that of the 3,000, 2,800 of them were on bases. <laughs> In North America, a recent visit here in 2017 to the U.S. Nationals, probably the opposite is true. Um, putting tanks on interesting bases like this um, is fine and common here in North America. Putting them together on groundwork, not so popular. Um, the reasons aren't important, doesn't matter. To be honest, I don't know why and I, I'm not... Quite frankly, I don't really care about it. All I know is this, is that for roughly 360 days of the year, my models sit in my cabinets. And I want them represented on the appropriate groundwork. Um, it's, it's one thing to have my tank sitting on glass shelves, but <clears throat> I much just prefer, it's just a preference, but I just prefer them to be sitting with the proper terrain. So, um... One of the things too is, and you know this going into the U.S. Nationals if you're going to enter your model, you know the rules going in. Most guys have read those rules and so you must follow their rules. And one of the rules is about elaborate groundwork on a tank or underneath a tank is not necessarily where they want your, they want, they would have a preference of having your model there on the tablecloth. Like I say, that's their rules, and um, there are other portions of that show where groundwork is, is totally, you know, vignettes and dioramas and stuff like that. So, um, so in any event, to start off, I usually go down to Ikea, wait for the sale day, and pick up just picture frames. And the picture frames at Ikea or Walmart are probably in the $10 range for the size that you need for a 35th scale piece of armor and and they have lots of variety at least they do at walmart they'll have more variety than say at ikea but just go down and pick up yourself especially if you're going to do a theme over the next um half a year say vietnam tanks or um, german armor get four or five frames that are exactly the same so that it just follows a theme in your on your um in your showcase. Um, if you switch to say contemporary armor or something like that, you might want to change the style of frame. So when I went down to a yeah, um, Walmart store, I picked up four of these frames, identical frames, so that if I have a panther, a tiger, and then say the opposite uh, allied stuff, Sherman and an M10, they look in a theme in my cabinet at home. So, um, so like I say, I, I picked up four of the same frame. But one of the other things, and very inexpensive base for a tank, is the, and this is an Ikea thing, and they're not always at Ikea, but these are basically just uh, drawer fronts for kitchen cabinetry. That's usually in the um, dent and chip section of Ikea. And then if it needs a little touch up with paint, just airbrush the the drawer front as you can see by the profile this is you know for your knives and forks this is for for the drawer front in your kitchen so but it's an excellent 35th scale armor base and like i say they're not as easy to find but they're very inexpensive and beautifully finished like this particular piece i have never touched with paint i bought this the way it is for about five dollars so there's that so look at the door fronts that your cabinetry shop. This one I had made for me because I was um, doing a diorama that fit these dimensions. I gave the carpenter the dimensions and I think during his lunch break um, he just used um, you know his framed up wood put it together for me. Inexpensive in my case um, because he was a customer here at the store and he could take a custom size and mill work it. And um, three days later, I had a 
beautiful base. Um, and then there's the simple go to the uh, Home Depot, get a four by four sheet of uh, this type of wood. It's not really wood, it's glue and fiber, but, and then just run it through your bandsaw. If you have the uh, luxury of having a, a not, sorry, not a bandsaw, but a table saw, and just cut the size you need. Uh, but also too, Home Depot has a service where they will give you a couple of cuts for free once you buy the wood. So if you know the sizes, even Home Depot will cut the size for you. So this is a very inexpensive base for a tank or a diorama. One of the disadvantages is, is that it's got a lousy finish on the sides, but with um, just go to the lumber section of the Home Depot, buy the appropriate lumber, and, uh, and just make yourself a side for the, your, your base. And um, it's, it's gonna take you all of about 10 minutes to turn that into a nice base for a tank. So there's options out there, as you can see by this um, T54. Uh, this is a picture frame. And, and one of the other places you can find picture frames is at a garage sale, which I'm pretty sure is where this came from. So there's lots of cups and saucers and crap that you can buy at a garage sale and normally lousy art. So just throw the art away and you're left with a perfect 35th scale base for a tank. So, and you can get this for probably a buck. So pay no attention to the artwork, look at the frame, and if it suits your uh, uh, armor that you're working on, for you know next to nothing, you're, you're in the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go into detail about this. Will be the frame that Dave Forrest and I'll use for his uh, his Normandy Sherman. Um, so over the next uh, couple of sessions, we're going to walk through making this into some proper groundwork. But one of the also things a visit to Home Depot is to go get this insulation foam. And I think they can, they'll sell it to you at, um, you can get it in a 4 by 8 sheet if you're doing a heck of a lot of dioramas. But I think you can buy as little as um, a 4 by 4 sheet. So that's what I use for my base for all my groundwork. And underneath this groundwork, underneath this tank, is this pink foam. And, uh... You can just see a hint of it underneath the frame. This is a uh, evergreen stock that you must put around your green, uh, your pink foam afterwards. Otherwise it looks dreadful. So, but we're gonna get into all of those kind of things. But one of the, Dave and I are gonna work on our groundwork project, but one of the references uh, that I use for groundwork are these simple little art magazines that you can get at any little art store any gallery shop it's usually a wildlife uh, section in the in most art stores like if you're doing a vietnam m113 or m48 there's a great photograph as a reference for um, leaves and branches and ferns and all that sort of stuff the type of bark on the trees and so using a reference as simple as one of these books now obviously we all have the internet today and we can quickly you know go to images and find settings for vietnam or the normandy campaign or whatever but sometimes a, a picture book like this or a advertisement book can give you also a thought about a, a snow scene and a fence rail fence and a diorama setting so these are great references um so keep these in mind. They're probably free at, uh, you know, if you go through a mall and there's an art shop there, you can probably pick these up for maybe a dollar. The other things, same goes with these. I picked these up in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. It's, it's got endless amounts of suggestions for doing interesting groundwork. So I use these for references um, all the time. So those are great to have. And then, of course, we have, you know, I think all of our modeling friends have endless amounts of books in our libraries um, to show 
true pictures. The, the difference being that they're black and whites. Um, all right, so what I'll do is I'll start my groundwork with just cutting this to size. It's easy to cut it to size. Um, all you're going to need in your thing for making bases is, uh, is a good utility knife and a ruler. Now, one of the one of the things, if you're going to use a picture frame, you're going to use the um, back masonite that you get with the picture frame, and that's what you're, is going to support your tank as far as strength goes. You just run a bead of glue around on the bottom, pop it back in. So now you have a start. You have a the foundation part for your foam and your groundwork. What you don't want to do is paint this sort of the appropriate color, put a little bit of groundwork in this and have this little lip all the way around and have the tank sitting in it like this. So you don't want to be doing that. You don't want to have, it stops your eye. It's not pleasing to the eye if the tank is lower than the lip of the frame. So no matter what, even if it's a simple setting, you're still gonna to wanna to have the tank raised up to this height. So one of the easiest ways to do that is just to use balsa wood as your, uh, as your riser. So you can, if the foam is too thin or you just want a simple um, bricks and, and a... Okay, so one of the um, simplest uh, displays for your model underneath your model is just these Barbican roads of which come in a lot of variety. There's, I think, six or seven different um, stripes that this comes in. So now if you just lay it in there like so, there's still at least a quarter inch to rise up. Cause again, this isn't going to be suitable like that. So it just, what you just want to do is to put a little shim in and I just take uh, eighth of an inch balsa wood or whatever the appropriate measurement is going to be as far as thickness. And most of us have all this balsa wood sitting around from from the olden days, uh, making balsa wood airplanes and what have you. Today's the day to use them. And just all you're going to do is, and it doesn't have to be even a... an exact measurement underneath the base. Don't stress out about cutting everything to exact size and everything. All you really want to do is put a little shim in. So then you're going to use a glue, either white glue or weld bond. Stabilize these underneath your base. And then you... And it's perfect. Absolute perfect height. All right, and then just angle it and cut it to the right size. And then if you drop your panther on it now, put a little sidewalk section in here. And presto, in about 20 minutes, you can make yourself a, a nice display base for your tank. Very, very simple. Now, in my case, we're going to do a little bit of the Normandy thing. Uh... Not too many, uh, the display that Dave and I are going to put together is not going to involve a road or anything like that. It's going to involve groundwork, uh, terrain. Uh, if anything, it's going to be a road, but a cart road, a farmer's type of road. So um, we won't have the uh, any reason to be using this stuff. But like I say, this is one of the simplest ways, and this is hard, hard hydrocal. So great to paint. Great to weather. As you can see, I've just started weathering up this for a different project. And um, an excellent base if you want to, like I say, it'll take you 20 minutes to put this together. Spend an evening painting it. And by the next day, you have a beautiful base for a model show or for your display cabinet. But like I say, Dave and I are doing a Normandy campaign um, thing, maybe on a cart road or farmer's field type of setting so just... 
very easy to work with. And you've got a great start. Now, you'll notice that there's a little bit of movement in here. There has to be movement in here. The tolerances have to be, uh, certainly don't make it jammed in there. For the simple reason that you're gonna have to put a 20,000 or a 20,000 strip of evergreen um, siding all the way around your diorama just to, just to hide that lousy. Uh, if you go to paint that, it never comes out right. What you want really, around the edges is a finish like this or like this so don't worry about how tight you jam this in there you're gonna have a lot of room to play plus you're gonna also cover it with um, plaster and the plaster will also have some body to it so um, so don't squeeze this into your frame leave yourself a little bit of play even even as much as a um, eighth or a quarter inch on each side because anything that's if it ends up being too big, just put a little more extra plaster in the side and it'll it'll lock in. Um, so then, now we have a great height to do our carving. And, and to do our carving in this pink plast, uh insulation foam, all you need is a, is a rasp. Now, some of us don't have a rasp at home. Um, again, something that you could buy at a flea market there's always this sort of things at flea markets don't don't go out and pay 25 dollars for one of these if if um your next door neighbor may have them sitting in the garage because no one uses them anymore so these are very easy to come across and the heavier the better it'll just cut through this foam very easily So with five pulls on the rasp, look at the nice little river indent that I have there. I can I can create a little uh, side of a road uh, with a little stream in it almost, just with five pulls on the rasp. So very easy, user friendly to friendly to use. So a rasp, a utility knife, a bit of insulation foam, and your IKEA frame, and pretty much you're ready to. You know, carve out in about 20 minutes a setting for your a setting for your tank. Um, what we'll do is um, I'll cut up this piece, or rather this piece, to suit Dave's tank, um, and then next episode we'll get into the groundwork, uh, the plaster and the stones, leaves, branches, um, and all the ground cover. So thanks so much, and we'll see you shortly.